in to today's topic uh, we have to study about uh, wireless security but before that we will briefly go through the concept of uh, wireless networks uh, wireless uh, networks are basically the single hop uh, networks and here you have access points and uh, they extend the network connectivity by one hop wireless link okay so they are single hop networks and there are wireless these access points they are uh, deployed there and uh, um, they, these access points they extend the connectivity of uh, the, these wireless networks by a single hop or by one hop and the example of uh, such networks is the wireless wireless lan wireless lan is the simplest form of the wireless networks there we have some access point and uh, this access uh, point uh, is connected through some wire with the backbone network here you have backbone network and then from this access point you have the single hop communication to the wireless devices okay this is and uh, here you have your wireless device maybe your phone or it may be your laptop okay so this forms your wireless network and wireless LAN is the simplest example of these networks fine so uh, single hop communication but it's not necessary that you have single hop communication you can have multiple hop communication so another type of wireless network uh, networks are multi hop networks okay and the examples of such multi hop networks are cellular networks and the ad hoc networks ad hoc net networks are basically the self configuring networks and multi hop wireless devices they self organize into an ad hoc network if you have uh, different uh, mobile devices they uh, connect to each other uh, for the peer communication and they form the ad hoc network and they forward data over the multi hop wireless link so data can be transmitted from one point to another point by using multiple hops and uh, how these hops are created because of the different uh, mobile devices for example you have a particular region like this you have a mobile device here you have a mobile device here you have another mobile device here you have mobile device here and so on okay so for example this is your uh, mobile device s this is your mobile device uh, d so you have to transmit the data from s to d in between you have different number of mobile devices so you can transmit your data to this and this will forward the, to this and this will forward to this and uh, this uh, all uh, happens because of the routing algorithms okay so you will have the multiple uh, multiple hops in order to forward the data okay so such type of networks they are considered as the multi hop networks and the ad hoc networks are the, are the examples of such uh, multi hop networks ad hoc networks they have the ad hoc nature and they present additional security challenge how the additional security challenge because they are open here the air medium is air and the attacker can connect anywhere in in this network fine uh, like like you have different number of devices here okay and one of these devices may be the attacker's device and that device will capture the traffic and that device will be used to forward traffic and also that device can send its own traffic send its can send its own scripts to the uh, to the uh, other devices in the network and the the traffic can be a malicious code which once get executed on the uh, user's device that can infect the users data okay so these are they they such type of networks they are susceptible to attack okay any attacker can send the malicious code or the malicious data uh, in the network okay another example is the cellular network in the cellular network uh, for a particular region you have uh, you have a an access point okay and in this access point you can have direct communication either to the mobile devices or you can install smaller smaller antennas okay these antennas are the transmitters and receivers smaller smaller antennas and under these antennas you can have the mobile devices like this okay so this communication is going to be multi hop communication again so cellular networks and the ad hoc networks they are the best examples of the multiple hop wireless networks and when we talk about uh, these uh, these ad hoc networks in ad hoc networks uh, uh, they can be attacked in both 
control plane and data plane control plane means in terms of routing in terms of routing if the malicious or the, if the attacker is connected in the uh, in the in the network then the attacker will be uh, will be taking part in the routing process also fine and also in the data plane means the attacker can capture the uh, some sensitive data or the attacker can modify the sensitive data so in both cases the attacker can modify or it can harm the system next is your wireless lan architecture so what are the uh, basic uh, constituents of this uh, wireless lan in wireless lan as we know that uh, there is an access point which is connected to a wide network when you have a uh, an access point like you have an access point so you have somewhere uh, maybe in the cellular networks you have msc and this msc your bts is connected through a wire so this is going to be a wired connection wired connection but from this bts you will have the wireless links you will have the wireless links to your mobile devices you can use different number of repeaters you can use different number of transceivers where you have transmitters and receivers uh, in, 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 under this under the domain of this bts uh, but the basic structure is your bts is connected with the mo mobile switching center uh, with the help of a uh, wire and then you can extend this network wirelessly so in wireless uh, uh, architecture the wireless devices they communicate with the centralized stationary access point uh, th uh, through the wireless channels you have different wireless channels which are uh, uh, allocated uh, from the spectrum and the, the frequency spectrum and then you can communicate with the access point the access point is connected to a wire network and thus functions as an ethernet switch so it works as an ethernet switch okay and but wireless switch this uh, gives the connectivity to the devices wirelessly the physical and the mac layer specifications for the wireless lan defined by the ieee 802.11 standard and it was uh, the first standard which was adopted in the year 1977 and in during that time uh, we used to have 1 to 2 mb per second data rates in uh, in these uh, wireless networks and the uh, the unlicensed uh, 2.4 gigahertz of band we were using that time but this time we are uh, even using uh, 5 gigahertz of band also okay after that uh, the, the, there were some improvements uh, over these uh, standards and, uh, and there was uh, another standard uh, which was uh, 802 dot 11 like uh, there are certain other uh, variables a and g were added with this standard and the speed was about 54 mb per second and uh, then you had uh, 802.11 n here you were using both the bands 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz and the speed is uh, approximately 600 mb per second okay so there were improvements over uh, these standards next is attacks on wireless lan although uh, there are some security mechanisms in the wireless networks but uh, you can uh, perform certain attacks and the attacks uh, which are uh, uh, basically based on their scope and impact first is your channel jamming attack so channel jamming means uh, the attacker jams the channel in the physical layer and thus denies access to the legitimate users independent of whether the network is secured so in channel jamming what happens this wireless communication happens in terms of the frequency channels over the frequency channels and when the attacker wants to deny some particular channel to a legitimate user then the attacker will send a high frequency signal or a high signal with a high transmission power in the adjoining channel so as to create the interference in the neighboring channel the one which is uh, which the user is going to use so because of that the user will not be able to access that channel and uh, that is what we call channel jamming then you have unauthorized access uh, the attacker will gain access to the uh, internal network by using the access point and it bypasses the firewall basically the firewalls are usually uh, installed on the gateways and uh, the attacker uses some access point uh, of some organization and then it uh, gets the internal uh, access to the internal network and if the authentication is not turn turned on uh, that is a default feature then the attacker will easily connect to the access point third type of attack is traffic analysis the attacker can analyze the 
uh, overheard uh, wireless traffic uh, uh, to obtain the useful information such as the network usage pattern what kind of uh, traffic pattern is there the attacker will analyze that and then attacker will do the crypt analysis and attacker can uh, generate the uh, some cipher text and plain text pairs okay so these are some certain attacks which can be uh, performed on the wireless lan now uh, although we are uh, uh, having uh, some uh, uh, threats to these wireless networks but there are some benefits of uh, these wireless networks also uh, in the benefits you have uh, the first one as the flexibility okay uh, flexibility uh, for both network operators and the users here uh, you have the flexibility for uh, both networks and operators network coverage uh, provided everywhere without the cost of deploying and maintaining the wires coverage is provided without deploying and maintaining wires then you have mobility mobility uh, it provides users with anywhere anytime access and freedom of roaming while networking while the user are connected to the network and uh, uh, they are uh, uh, provided access anywhere and anytime so access is anywhere and anytime which means that while the user is on the move the user can still connect to the system to the wireless system okay and uh, after that we have the other benefit that is comparable data rate so in the advanced technologies in the advanced advanced wireless technologies we have comparable data rates comparable data rates with wired counterparts we have comparable data rates with the wired networks okay there are two dimensions of wireless security uh, one is information security and another is network security and it is similar to our wired networks in the information security which provides security to the information exchange between two entities for example uh, the information security is provided by means of confidentiality integrity and authentication now you can also uh, include another feature that is non repudiation non repudiation means uh, uh, not denying from some 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 kind of communication either from sender or or, or from receiver okay and when we talk about uh, another dimension of wireless security that is network security it is to protect the networking system as a whole and sustain its capability to provide connect connectivity between communicating entities so we have to protect the network uh, infrastructure also uh, which will uh, uh, which have to be uh, sustained to provide uh, the connectivity between the two communicating entities so in two dimensions we have to secure our wireless networks although uh, most of the security uh, threats against the wired networks uh, uh, that we have experienced they are equally uh, applied to the wireless networks but in addition to that we have some Uh, more vulnerabilities in the wireless networks we have some additional vulnerabilities in the wireless networks so what are those uh, additional vulnerabilities in these uh, wireless networks one is open wireless access medium open wireless access medium because of the open access to medium an attacker can easily intercept and inject messages in the wireless networks than the wired ones as we have uh, seen that in the wireless networks uh, the medium is here medium is here so here the communication is done through the wireless channels and the attacker can easily connect to those wireless channel can have access to those wireless channels and can transmit its malicious codes so that is the additional vulnerability that we do not experience in the wired networks next is your limited bandwidth uh although in the present time when we have the technologies like 4g 5g and even uh, we are heading towards 6g we have uh, a lot of bandwidth but the uh, the general concept uh, in the in the in these networks in the wireless networks uh, is that we have limited bandwidth as compared to the wired counterparts because if in the wired networks when we require more bandwidth we can install a parallel fiber okay additional parallel, parallel fiber but in case of uh these uh, wireless networks when we have fixed a particular access point which is having some particular bandwidth uh we cannot increase that bandwidth uh, by deploying some uh, other uh, access point we can have different network but we cannot increase the bandwidth so that is the limitation uh, in these uh, wireless networks as compared to the wired counterparts 
Next is your limited computational resources. Because of small size devices which can we connect to the uh, access points, computational resources are limited. Because in, in the wireless scenarios, we have the devices like our mobile uh, smartphones, we have our laptops. So they are generally considered uh, with a sm uh, as small uh, the size devices and they have uh, comparably uh, they are having uh, less computational resources as compared to the uh, other devices which we connect to our uh, wired networks. So uh, the, the usage or the execution of stronger algorithm which uh, are having more number of rounds or having the uh, uh, complex security algorithms uh, which uh, when we execute on such uh, low computational uh, resources uh, devices or the constraint devices then we can have problem. Okay, we will not be able to uh, execute those in a efficient manner. So that is uh, what we call limited computational resources. That is again a limitation in the additional uh, in these uh, wireless networks. Limited battery power. Uh, a trade-off between battery power and the security strength has to be set as both depend on the key size, number of rounds in the encryption algorithm and the complexity. When we are using some uh, algorithm and uh, we have to execute that uh, that algorithm on a, a constrained uh, device which we are using the wireless network then there has to be a uh, trade-off if we uh, need more battery power uh, uh, for a longer period of time then the our algorithm should be less complex when we have the uh, more complex or more secure algorithm where we have larger key size where we have more number of rounds in the encryption algorithm and where we have more complexity then it is going to drain our battery uh, uh, very fast. So a trade-off is uh, has to be set between the battery power of a device and the algorithm's complexity. Wireless system complexity in the form of signaling. Uh, as in the I, I said that in the wireless uh, network we have the flexibility of mobility. We the user can uh, be on the move while it is connected to the network and for that purpose when it changes its access points frequently then a lot of signaling process is uh, happening a uh, lot of signals are uh, sent or exchanged between the mobile device and the uh, access point so uh, so that uh, also increases the complexity in the form of the overhead so that is uh, also another drawback of these wireless networks and uh, this is all uh, what uh, we have in this uh, lecture some uh, of the benefits of these uh, wireless networks uh, what are wireless lands and what are the additional vulnerabilities in these wireless networks as compared to our wired counterparts so that's all in this lecture thank you for watching